Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're finally gonna do... I was gonna say a quick bookshelf tour, but that's a lie. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video, but we're gonna go through all of the books that I have on this bookshelf behind my bed, and the bookshelf over here, kind of behind my, um, like, organization, like, vanity area right there, that's in the background of all of my videos, because they're always there, but you can't really zoom in to actually see what books are there, and these aren't all of my books but it's a good summary slash uh like representation of my taste and books so first let's start with this side i'm gonna move this bed so we can get a better look and we'll start here all right guys so welcome to this first bookshelf like i mentioned before my bed is literally pushed up against this bookshelf so this is kind of like my pseudo nightside table. I have my alarm clock here. I have some sleep phones, which are just headphones that look like, or look like, that are actually like a headband. So I can wear it. I love to listen to ASMR videos, so I love wearing those at night when I go to bed. And then over here, I just have a couple of like little journals. I tried to keep a uh, dream journal because I've been having a lot of weird dreams and I thought it'd be more fun to try and remember them. And I heard the best way to do that is through a journal. So <laughs> we've got those right there. The books stacked up right here are some of my biggest books and like they don't stand all the way up. The one downside to these shelves is that they're pretty small. So these are the biggest books. This is a cultural atlas of Japan. It's a like a, not an antique but it's like a classic book from like the 70s or something. And this was actually given as a gift to me from one of my dad's old, he, so he's in the military, one of his old commanders. Him and his wife spent a lot of time in Japan, and so when they found out I was actually going in high school, um, his wife came over and gave me this book and a few really nice like postcards that got there. So I love this, and I'm always keeping it. I know like whenever I actually have a house, this would be like a coffee table book, as would this book, but for now, they're kind of just here. I do have an old Good Housekeeping magazine here, because <laughs> it's got Hugh Jackman's face on it, and I like Hugh Jackman, so... <laughs> This is the Hamilton Revolution book, and I actually have uh, another magazine inside of it, but this is the big book that came out that has all the beautiful pictures of the original like staging of the show, and it's got all the lyrics, and it's another gorgeous book, and I had to get it, so that one's right there as well. Moving over to this next section, I have a full collector's edition box of the Harry Potter books. This was actually a gift from my best friend a couple of years ago, and I love it. The only thing that's missing is I do have the first book missing. I let a, a colleague of mine borrow the book because she really wanted to get into Harry Potter and never really read it. Unfortunately, that colleague um, ended up taking a long extended like medical leave and then leaving the company, and I haven't seen her since. I, I've heard from other people that she's doing better, but she's still, she's still got a, a ways to go. Uh, but I never got my book back, so <laughs> I'm glad that she's doing better, and I, I wish her all the best. Um, but I do have to buy the first book again to make this a uh, complete set. <laughs> Up here I actually have uh, a used textbook. This is Death Society and the Human Experience. I have mentioned in other videos that I love forensics. I'm fascinated by it. Uh, I love crime scenes. Uh, the whole mortuary... Uh, like system also fascinates me. So uh, I got this book because I was very interested in it and as I worked or I used to work at a textbook store I got some pretty good discounts on books especially when they like they were used and sometimes people surprisingly like people threw away books like if they try to sell them back and there's nothing there or they're just like yeah just take the book I don't want it and we would just have to recycle them. So sometimes I would get books that like people just didn't want and they just like threw them at us so it's probably you're gonna see that a few more times around here scooting on over to this next section i don't really have like an organizational method to my books i think i tried once upon a time but in this small space i can't really do a whole lot so this first book i want to pull out because i did get it signed this is the samurai's garden by gail sukiyama and i got this at a used bookstore like way back in the day honestly don't remember but I, I love used bookstores, and so I got this there, and then when I lived in Washington, D.C., they always have that big um, national book festival every year, and I was actually able to go and meet the author and get my book signed. So I loved the book. I thought it was very interesting, and 
I have a special place in my heart for signed books, and I do have a couple of them here. Next, I have Ann Carson, Autobiography of Red. I actually have not read this one yet. Next, I have Cracks by Sheila Kohler, and this was actually made into a movie. For the most part, I don't like buying the books that are like the movie covers, you know, but this one is fascinating. Like, look at that. That is gorgeous. I read the book and I watched the movie. I love the movie. Eva Green is incredible. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, but the book is, it's very different from the movie. So I would recommend watching the movie first and then <laughs> jumping into the book. Because the book, like the description or the review says, erotic and disturbing, it is quite disturbing. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Next, I have actually a very important book, and I've got the other one down here. So the original one that I read was Chinese Cinderella by Adeline Yen Ma. This is an excerpt of this full memoir, which is Falling Leaves. It's the story of an unwanted daughter in China in, I believe, the 1940s, 30s. Um, I know eventually she gets out and she, her whole story is honestly amazing. And I read this in eighth grade and it had a profound impact on me. And I just, I've had a connection to the story and to the author like ever since. So I actually have another copy of this because I have the original book I bought back in like middle school. And then this is a newer version because um, I think my other copy was literally falling apart. I read it so often. And then I finally went, when I went, to my used bookstore. They use this as a textbook in one of the classes, so I bought the full memoir. I would highly recommend this. It's powerful, it's emotional, just oh my god. So I have, <laughs> and you'll see that that's kind of a theme. If it, there's a story, especially a memoir, that I really connect with, I have several copies of it. So after that, I have Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Dougherty, and I, I love this. Again, Mortuary Science. Next, I have a, this is like a classic book. This is Read Real Japanese. I did study Japanese for almost seven years throughout high school and college. And this is a book from like the 1970s. I like going through used bookstores and finding like vintage books and I, I'm a book collector. So I like having books like that around. This I actually stole from my boyfriend. <laughs> this is one of those Dear America, My Name is America journals. Does anyone else remember reading like these scholastic like journal books? Because I do. I've got another one, but it's a princess one. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. It's actually right down here. But I remember these journals and I remember it being just such like an experience. I loved these books and I totally forgot about this one. I, we were in my boyfriend's house cleaning and he had this book and I was like, oh, you had that book? And he's like, yeah, I probably just never read it. I'm like, I'm taking it then. Like, <laughs> no, you don't appreciate it. Next, I have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I actually didn't read any of his works until he won the, was it the Pulitzer or was it the Nobel. I think it was a Pulitzer. I have to look it up. Um, but he won a big award and I had never read any of his works. My friends are recommending him to me. So I read this and it broke my heart. Do not read this in public. I was literally tearing up on the train. Like, <laughs> but it was such a good book. It was really good. Next I have a book from my classical Japanese literature class. This is Nitsui's story. Um, and then I have this Snow Country by Yasunari Karabata. Um, and then here we get into an interesting different book. This is one of the books I probably never would have picked up unless I worked at a bookstore and I saw someone using this for a class. I haven't finished this yet. This is called The Essence of Style, How the French Invented High Fashion, Fine Food, Chic Cafes, Style, Sophistication, and Glamour. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's kind of fascinating to me. So I know at one point I will finish that. Next, I have The Mindful 20-something. I do like reading about meditation, so I have a couple of books scattered through here. This is a textbook from when I was in high school, actually. So this is The Princess, blah, blah, blah. The Princess of Cleves by Madame de Lafayette, and I just remember reading this in class and just like having a moment with it. I don't know what exactly struck me so much about this, but I loved it. And I also, I love the Norton Critical Editions of books. They're just so well done. I've got like three more down here that we'll get to. But I love the Norton Critical Editions. And this book just, I don't know, really spoke to me when I read it in high school. Next, I have another book that I had to read in my Japanese lit class. This is the Kagero Niki or the Kagero Diary. Um, it's actually like the diary of a woman um, in like high society in like classical Japan, which is fascinating fascinating. 
Next I have this book which is The Daughters of the Samurai, A Journey from East to West and Back by Janice Nimura. This is actually fascinating because it's a story of about three young women who were sent abroad like to America to like learn and basically they went on tour in like the late 1800s just to talk about their country and to learn more about America and to learn English. It was fascinating and I had no idea like that was a thing so I'm glad I picked that up and read it. This is another one of those diary books that I mentioned. This is the Cleopatra one and this is literally from when I was in middle school. It's like falling apart but I I loved this book. It was so good. I loved this series. It was fascinating. It was definitely fictionalized of course but it was a way to engage a younger audience and get them interested in history so <laughs> I still have this one. Next I have The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Eugenides? I can't pronounce that. This was fascinating honestly. I, I saw the movie first and then I read the book. Uh, it is a little bit different but I felt the movie was actually a very true adaptation and pretty good so I mean it's sensitive material, it's a sensitive book but if you're interested honestly it was really good. Next I have Friends Trist's Secrets of a Courtesan. This is a totally fictional book but I got this again at a used bookstore and it fascinated me. The cover is like really pretty. So that was a fun book. <laughs> you know this actually, has anyone ever listened to the podcast um my dad wrote a porno this reminds me of the like this reminds me kind of like the book that the guy was trying to write but never quite did so it's actually a good book i liked it next i have the purity myth um by jessica valetti valenti this was really fascinating um i watched the documentary um i think i got this back in college when i was doing a little bit more research very good book i would highly recommend that next i have the great gatsby I liked, I like Gatsby. What can I say? Gatsby. What Gatsby? Next I have the gigantic Alexander Hamilton book that inspired Lin-Manuel Miranda. I have to admit I have not read the whole thing. Yeah, I just, no. Next I actually have a book I've read multiple, 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 multiple times. This is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is my favorite book. Hands down, favorite book of all time. This thing is old and weathered and I've literally read it so many times it's like falling apart. I need to buy a new copy. Um, I actually did a video on this where I made a, an eyeshadow palette out of singles for my favorite book. I'll link that up in the cards if you want to see it. I, I love Donna Tartt, honestly. So amazing. This is my favorite. Um, I also have on the bottom shelf down here the Goldfinch, also by Donna Tartt. This thing is huge. I kind of wish I'd also gotten this in paperback. This is the one where the book, the movie is actually coming out in September. Um, I'm thinking about going to see it, but I really wanted to reread this book, and I really connected with this book. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in. I've actually, like, earmarked a bunch of, like, really important passages. When I read books, I like to interact with the text, so I will dog ear pages, I will write notes in the margins, I will highlight, because that's, like, my way of making the book my own, which is why I like collecting them. <laughs> Um, but this is such a good book and I don't know if I want to see the movie without recently rereading it again. I don't know if I'll have time to reread it before it's in theaters, but I will see the movie at some point. <laughs> Next I have my three other Norton Critical Editions. These are all from when I took um, a tragedy class in college, which honestly that was my favorite class. I love tragedies. It's just my thing. I have The Red and the Black by Stendhal. I have, actually, I think that one is from my comedy class, but we also also discussed it. I have Dante's Inferno, of course, and I have Hamlet. Hamlet's not my favorite Shakespeare play. Of course, that is Macbeth. I have a different copy of Macbeth on my other bookshelf, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Finishing off my top shelf, I have a book of poetry by Lang Leave called The Universe of Us. I love the whole aesthetic of Lang Leave, um, just like the pictures on the front and the poetry. Um, I actually like marked up a book and gave it as a gift to a significant other in the past because I, I love, I just love her poetry and I love the aesthetic. Uh, so don't read a lot of poetry, but I like that. This is actually a book I'm thinking of getting rid of. This is On the Road. <laughs> Uh, I haven't finished it. I didn't really like it. <laughs> so I'm thinking of getting rid of that. And then next I have a book that again that I wouldn't have picked up unless I worked at a university bookstore. This is called I Can't Believe She Did That Why Women Betray Other Women at Work. And it was for a um, like an independent study class and I thought that was kind of fascinating. And I personally have not run into situations like this um, but I was surprised that it was a uh, like a popular enough phenomenon to 
have like studies and research and a book on it so definitely interested in that so shifting down to the bottom shelf we're just right down below I have three of the original Harry Potter books that I had in my original collection. I first got into Harry Potter after the first four books had come out. So the first four were paperback. Those fell apart long ago. Five, six, and seven were all hardcover that I bought at the midnight release. I got them the day they came out and they're a bit special to me. And though I think five fell apart. Like I think the spine broke on one of these. Actually no, I think it was six. Let's, oh yeah, this book is beat up. Yeah, it was number six. This book, the spine is like, the spine like split down the middle. <laughs> but again, they are very nostalgic. I have memories associated with these, so I'm gonna keep them no matter what. Next, I have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I have a small collection of works by uh, Sophocles right here. That was a free book I got from work. I have The Girl Guide, which is just kind of like your early 20s get your life together book that I got. I have The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. Again, a textbook. I haven't actually read this one yet. I'm not sure what it's about. I have God Is Not One by Stephen Prothero. Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office, which was a like a business title. I actually found it a bit fascinating. Um, I don't think all of the advice there fits, but it was an interesting read. Here's the Chinese Cinderella I mentioned earlier. Next, I have two Murakami Haruki books, and I actually have another one right over here. Um, I have After Dark and The Colorless Suguru Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. I like most of his books. Honestly, I'm pretty fascinated, but again... People have argued that he is a Japanese writer that caters to a Western audience, so I am a Western audience, uh, so I don't know about that, but I really like his books, so I've got quite a few of them. Next, I have Designed the Life You Love, which is kind of more of a workbook. I had the honor and pleasure of getting to see um, this author and designer at a uh, book signing than an event that I worked at. Um, so again, I like having books signed and I like actually got to like really enjoy that event. Next, I have a, another very personal like memoir to me. This is the newer copy of the book I picked up. This is Wasted by Maria Hornbacher and it's a, it's a mem eating disorder memoir. I struggled with a lot of the things she struggled with when I was younger and I felt like we had a lot in common like she also went to boarding school I went to boarding school she went to college in DC I went to college in DC so a lot of this like just hit me <laughs> um, and I've read my first copy to the point where it's almost falling apart I think I still have it on my other shelf and I bought another one but again you see um, when I like a memoir and I connect with it I have a couple copies let's just go through a couple of these I have Behind the Scenes at the Museum, uh, Stephen Hawking, A Brief History of Time, Julie and Julia. I actually really like this book and the movie. Um, another Japanese classic book for my literature class I took was uh, The Genji and the Heike. Um, I have Rashomon. Um, this is actually a book that my mom had. My mom passed away when I was young. And it's just like about teddy bears, but uh, I've kept it. <laughs> Uh, Bodies We've Buried, another forensics book that, you know, I'm fascinated, of course. Um, another Caitlin Dougherty book, From Here to Eternity. I didn't like this one as much, but it was still pretty interesting. I already mentioned The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It's just been kind of living there because I wanted to reread it. And this is the other Murakami book that I have right here, which is Killing Kamentadore. Mm -hmm. I shot myself in the foot by buying the hardcover of this because I do most of my reading on the train. <laughs> And my trains, it's, it's right outside of New York. They're sardine trains, they're packed. So you really only have hope of reading a book if it's a paperback. So I, I've only read part of it and I really wanna finish it. So I'm hoping to take that when I'm traveling. So I'll be traveling a lot in September and October. So I'm hoping I can bring this along and use it as like my traveling reading. Next, I have three books of a series that I loved as a child and I just reread recently. This is The Uglies Trilogy by Scott Westerfield. Here, The Uglies book I actually still have on my desk because I just did a, um, a video about it. I'll throw it up in the cards if you want to see that. But we have the second, third, and fourth books, pretties, specials, and extras. Love it. Next, I have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. 
Um, I have the novelization of Your Name. That movie was spectacular. I, I cried so hard. <laughs> it's a, kind of embarrassing. Next I have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. That was actually the first Neil Gaiman book I ever read and oh my god was it good. <laughs> I need to read more Neil Gaiman um, but that book was just so well done. I loved it. Next we have How to Stop Feeling Like Shit. I like help self-help books. They're interesting to me but that book wasn't really that great. Another book I'm probably gonna get rid of. Here we have actually one of the only not book things in here. It's the movie DVD set of The Phantom of the Opera because I've got a weak spot and it's Phantom. Uh, next another Japanese textbook. This is the Oxford Book of Japanese Short Stories. Then we have a book that I need to talk about because this kind of ruined my life. So this book, I had never heard about it until it was recommended to me by an old friend of mine. This is called The Raw Shark Text by Stephen Hall. This was recommended to me and I ended up getting a used copy through my bookstore. I still don't really know what it's about. <laughs> this was one of the most interesting journeys I've ever gone on. I spent the first two thirds of the book not even knowing what the hell was going on. <laughs> and then the last third thinking I did and then not really. I still couldn't tell you what it's about. What is, let's read the back. Eric Sanderson wakes up in a house he doesn't recognize, unable to remember anything of his life. All he has left are his diary entries recalling Cleo, a perfect love who died under mysterious circumstances, in a house that may contain the secrets to Eric's prior life. But there may be more to the story, or it may be a different story altogether. With the help of allies found on the fringes of society, Eric embarks on an edge-of-your-seat journey to uncover the truth about himself and to escape the predatory forces that threaten to consume him. Moving with the pace of a superb thriller, the raw shark texts has sparked the imagination of readers around the world and is one of the most talked about novels in years. I don't know what year this came out. Let's, let's see. 2007, it first published in 2007, yeah. So this came out when I was like in middle school. <laughs> But this, oh my god, this was just fascinating. Fascinating and confusing. So if you're in the mood for a confusing, like, if oh, I, I can't even explain it, right? But it was fascinating and it got me out of like a reading rut. It's different. It's, I can guarantee you it's different from anything you've read before. Which, for the most part, I can compare the, like, the rest of my books to something else. But this one, like, it's, it's one of a kind. Honestly, pick this book up, check it out, and then text me so we can be hella confused together. Next, I've got another Japanese textbook. This is Everyday Life in Traditional Japan. I also have another coffee table book right here. This is the At Home Barista, and it's just pictures and recipes about coffee. I love coffee, man. I can't live without it. Before I get into this whole section of books right here, let's talk about this. So this is the art book of Howl's Moving Castle. And again, another great coffee table book I would put out if I had a coffee table. This is a gift from my best friend and it's gorgeous. Ah, I love it. I think I spent hours just staring at all the illustrations in here. Again, I need a coffee table and a house to put this up on display in. <laughs> so these are all, essentially, with the exception of The Awakening by Kate Chopin, I have not read this yet. I need to make time to read it, but these are all the Hannibal Quadrilogy books. So you've got um, Silence of the Lambs, you've got Hannibal, Hannibal Rising, and Red Dragon. That's not in any order at all, because I'm pretty sure the published order and the chronological order are two different things. But you see I've got this set, this is the original set of books that I had and I read and I loved. Um, and this set was actually given to me as a gift. My boyfriend was trying to get me a nice collector's edition, like my Harry Potter box set. So he bought it off of Amazon, and the Amazon picture, the Amazon ISBNs and everything were for, like, this nice boxed set. But then when they got delivered, they were just the paperbacks, and they don't even match. Like, I had the same Hannibal Rising twice. <laughs> and he felt so bad. He said he thought it was going to be, like, a nice collector's edition, but... You know, you can't trust everything you see on Amazon. And it was sweet of him to know that I love this series and that he wanted to get me a nice collector set. So I still have these. Um, who knows, one day maybe I'll actually get that collector's edition set. And if I do, I'll probably 
uh, donate these or sell them. I'm not sure. I don't like getting rid of books, so <laughs> I don't do it that often. And then this all the way down here isn't even a book. It's a photo album. I have a bunch of my childhood photos in, um, and I just keep it right there because I really don't have any other place to put it. So that is everything for this first bookshelf. Hey guys, welcome over to the other bookshelf. So before we jump into the books, I do have a couple of like little things on display over here. Uh, this one is just a shot glass with a skull in it. It's kind of hard to show up because it's gleaming, but there. It's really cute. I got it as a gift. This is a pumpkin because I love pumpkins and it just has like some earrings in it. Uh, I don't want to spill it. It's got some earrings in it and it's fall all year round in my heart. So cute pumpkin. I have another little cup. This is just like a little mini Starbucks cup and I hang some earrings off of it. And last but not least, I have a little New Jersey. These aren't really focusing that well, are they? Last but not least, I have just a little another Starbucks mug. This is actually one of the like Christmas ornaments that they come out with every year and it just says New Jersey on it. <laughs> All right, so back to the books. I have the majority of my manga and my books in Japanese in this section. So this first book is actually very special. When I was first learning Japanese, I think I was like two or three years into it, um, my dad's ex, who he was dating at the time, was so sweet and very nice. Um, their relationship didn't work out, but for Christmas that year, she actually managed to get me the first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in Japanese. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever been given, quite honestly. So it's beautiful. I'm, I'm gonna keep this forever. I've been able to read through part of it, but with, you know, the Harry Potter world and all the terminology there, it's a bit difficult, but it's one of the best presents I've ever gotten. So these two are both Sekaiichi Hatsukoi, the, which is the world's greatest first love. You see the first one's in Japanese, the second one is in English. I bought the first one in Japan, so it's actually in Japanese. The second one, I think I bought that here, um, and I was eventually going to keep buying the whole set, but I stopped because A, I ran out of room, <laughs> and B, I wasn't keeping up with it as much. Um, here I have almost a full collection of the Death Note manga in English. Everything except for volume number seven. Um, this was actually such a beautiful gift from like my first boyfriend back when I was a teenager. And I think he still has volume seven. So I have volumes one through eight and then nine through twelve. And then I actually have this uh, DVD set of the entire series, which was pretty interesting. So I actually got that for free from... Um, like a favor I did to help out another bookstore. They were doing inventory and they had a whole bunch of these and for some reason they had to like mark them out of stock. And so we worked a whole day um, at this other store and they said they were really happy and if there's anything in this pile that you wanted, it's free and we're just gonna have to throw it out. And they had a bunch of these Death Note DVDs and I was like, oh shit, let me jump on that. So I got the Death Note <laughs> DVD there and then this behemoth, um, my current boyfriend got me. So this is the Death Note all in one edition. So it's literally one book, this is the spine, and it has the entire Death Note manga in it. <laughs> I don't really want to like pull it out because I don't know if I'll be able to get it back in, but that's how big it is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's like a special box edition, Death Note all in one. Um, and I just love the way the spine looks. It's so cool. And then over here, these are all Kurusuji or Black Butler. I bought all of these in Japan because well, I went to Japan in 2010. Yeah, 2010. And this was the big manga anime back then was Black Butler. Um, so I've got volumes one through five in in the original Japanese. Very cute. And then I got like a uh, photo or companion kind of book with it. Because they did have this for sale as well. So it's just kind of like, you know, sketches and things like that. But since I got these in Japan, I'm definitely like not ever going to get rid of them. They're more collector's pieces than anything. Next, I actually have a book written by a YouTuber. This is A Life Full of Glitter by Glitter and Lasers, who has a YouTube channel. She's more active on Instagram, I think, 
but I just find her so positive and inspiring and I love her haul videos. I just love listening to her talk. So when she came out with the book, I got it. Like, I think I pre-ordered it on Amazon, but it's such a cute little book. Next, I have Morg, A Life in Death. Again, really interested in forensic science. Next, I have Battle Royale, the original novel. I found this at a used bookstore down in um, Virginia, I think it was. And I had seen the movie, but I had never been able to find the book. Because this is actually pretty hard to buy in English. It's a little difficult, even online. So I was so glad I found that in the used bookstore. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I think if you've read, if you've seen the movie, I think you would really enjoy the book. You can get your hands on it. Next, I have my original copy of the Chinese Cinderella book I talked about earlier. So this is the original kind of beat up copy from when I was in middle school. And next we actually have a very special book to me that I again read like in middle high school. This is called My Side of the Mountain. I don't know what it is about this that just, it's just so fascinating to me. I love the book, it's really well written. It's about like a teenager who runs away to literally just like live in the woods, which I think is that, is that not everyone's fantasy right now, right? <laughs> But it's beautiful. I can reread this so many times. I just, I love this book. Uh, next, I have a Yukio Mishima book, again, from my Japanese lit class. Uh, next, I have a book called Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. And this book came out of left field for me. My best friend actually recommended I read it, and I did. And it, it was weird at first, because you really don't like the main character, like, at all. And then it turns, and it's amazing. So I would really recommend that one. I think it's, like on some book club. Yeah, not Oprah's book club, but like Reese Witherspoon has a book club, I guess, and that was in there. <laughs> Next, I have another Japanese lit book. This one's called Naomi. This book. Oh, I would really recommend this book. So this is called A Symmetry by Lisa Halliday, and it is a novel. I picked this up, quite honestly. I was at like a Barnes & Noble, and I read the back of the book, and the main character had the same job title I did, <laughs> and I was kind of interested. So I was like, oh yeah, let me pick it up. So I picked it up just for that silly little reason and it became an amazing book and an amazing experience. I loved this book. Oh, it does deal a lot with 9-11 um, so if that's a bit triggering for you I would not recommend this book. It really deals with some heavy themes but it was so good. Oh, I love it. This was actually a really good book too. This is Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I think this was a bestseller in Japan before it became an international bestseller. And I don't really want to give a lot of it away. It reminds me of like some... I'm trying to think of the best way to compare this to. I remember there was a short story called A and P. I'll throw the details up on the screen, but this book reminded me of like a better version and a more international, different version of that short story. And it's a really short novel. It's like a hundred-ish pages. You can get through it in like an hour, but fascinating. Next, I have John C. Maxwell, Developing a Leader Within You. I get a lot of these type of books, like, from my dad. <laughs> uh, books about, like, professional and personal development, about leadership, so I've got a few of those scattered around here. Next, I have The Stranger by Albert Camus. Uh, again, another book I wouldn't have picked up unless I worked at a bookstore, but fascinating. I liked it. Next, I have Madame Bovary, which I have not actually read the full thing of. Again, it's used as a text in some English courses, and it's a classic, so I picked it up and I was like, yeah, I gotta read it at some point. I have read this. This is Eurip you know, Euripides. Oh, can I speak today? This is Euripides. Um, and it's just like a really classic book. I got this at a used bookstore. Don't let me in a used bookstore because ugh, I'm just fascinated. Cause, like this is from 1914. Like someone literally wrote an inscription, a uh, Greek play copy, um, January 6th to 1914th used for production of play at 1914 Marisol College. So, I mean, that's fascinating, is that not? Like, so uh, I see as a book collector, I cannot turn up the chance of being able to do that. And also, look at that handwriting. Is that not gorgeous handwriting? Jesus. <laughs> Next, I actually have another Murakami book. This one's Kafka on the Shore. That's one of my favorites, honestly. I think uh, there's another one down here we'll get to, but I think Kafka on the Shore, um, 1Q84, which is the one down there, and the colorless one. Those are probably my favorites, but he's got a lot of books, and I have not read all of them. Next, I have a book that I read in my tragedy class. This is Endgame, which is a, a play by Samuel Beckett. Fascinating. 
and weird and strange and at some i feel like everyone should read that at some point next i have a book from another youtuber this is cassie ho um she did uh blog -ilates. And so when she came out with the book, I used to do Bologilates actually a lot. I used to follow the calendar and everything. Haven't really been doing it recently, but it's still a great book and I really wanted to support um, YouTubers that I supported. Next, I actually have a gift that I got from a cousin of mine. This is Another Mother Tongue, which is um, a collection of stories written by LGBTQ plus people. She gave this to me after I came out as bi. Um, because for, for a long time in college, I was dating someone who had not yet come out as trans, but uh, so at the time we were a same-sex couple. Um, and so at that time, I actually got that gift, and it was beautiful because she's, um, I don't know exactly how she identifies, so I don't want to misidentify her. But she is LGBTQ+, um, and so that was just a beautiful gift to get. Right next to it, I have The Death Class by Erika Hayasaki. The university that I worked at was actually really famous for it's called that it's called the death class and that class actually used one of the textbooks that i mentioned earlier um so a um reporter actually went and took the class and wrote a book about it um so that's fascinating i would really recommend picking that up if you're interested in it at all the next two books are from another youtuber that i really love mamrie hart she does the you deserve a drink series <laughs> on youtube she hasn't really been as active recently but she's been like on tour she's doing a podcast she's got a lot going on so her first book was You Deserve a Drink. I liked that one. And then her next book was I've Got This Round. I like the first one better. It's just kind of like snippets from her life. Basically, they're like a bunch of story times, and I find it interesting. Next, I have three copies of Frankenstein, because I love, love, love Frankenstein. I don't know what it is about the story. I love Mary Shelley. I love, I just love it. So I've got the Norton Critical Edition because of course I do. I have this one that I actually got at the bookstore that I worked at, which is a different, um, like comparative edition with some footnotes and some essays. And then I have just the Signet Classic Edition, which is just like an old used copy I found that is just beautiful. <sighs> Does anyone else like smelling books? Just... Oh. Please don't let me be the only one. Okay, the last few books, I have American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I actually really liked the show better than I liked the book, which in, which is strange. But if you've read the book, you know that the book is told in snippets of present day versus snippets of uh, historically people coming to America and bringing their gods with them. I 100% liked those snippets better than the main story. I could not get on board with some of the main characters. I just, it made me feel like icky. <laughs> So I actually like the show better. I have not seen the second season yet. We need to watch the second season. That'll happen at some point. Next, I have a true crime book, which is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I actually have not read this yet, but it's been recommended to me so many times that I had to pick it up and I will get to it eventually. The last two books on this shelf are both Japanese dictionaries. This one is actually like a pretty intense but full dictionary in Japanese. That I didn't get until like my last year in class. Uh, it's pretty pretty hard to use, but it's it's nice to get used to it. And then this one is just a kanji dictionary. It's in English. Uh, it's to help look up kanji because kanji is uh it, it's hard. <laughs> kanji is hard. All right. So moving down to the bottom row, the first four books I have here are part of a collection I got from a used bookstore once again. And it's just a bunch of classic titles. So it's called um, The World's Greatest Thinkers and it's separated into volumes of like man and spirit, man and the universe, man and the state, and man and man. And they're basically just a collection of like classic literature done by philosophers. Um, so let's take a look at this one. So this is man and man. So we have uh, Plato, we've got Aristotle, so I got all four at a used bookstore and I just I think they're beautiful. They're like classics. These are probably printed in like the 50s or the 60s. I've got a thing for classic books if you can't tell. I like books that have history behind them. I love it. So I, I'm holding on to them. I'll probably like my dream is to like live in a house where I have my own office and th these would be like on the desk in the office. Just <laughs> that's how I picture them. Next I have the classic book by Marie Kondo, Spark Joy, because yes, uh, I've actually bookmarked certain things in here. Uh, it's such a great book and I love what Marie Kondo is doing. It's such a beautiful like movement, especially for someone who loves cleaning things so much. So I've got the original book. I know she's got a couple other ones, but I haven't picked them up, so it is very good. Check it out if you have not. 
this next big behemoth. So this is the collection of 1Q84 by Murakami Haruki. This was originally published in three parts. I waited until they had compiled everything together into the one book and published it. So this thing is like, I can't even have the whole thing on, on screen. It's huge. Uh, it's like over a thousand pages. Um, it's a deep realistic fantasy book so I would recommend it if you if you're into fantasy uh definitely give it a shot it's such a strange book I think it's the first Murakami book that I read I don't know if it would be a good first book for you but I loved the book um I think I read it for the first time over the course of a winter break and it took me a while to get through it all it's a big book but really good. Next I have this really nice like collector's edition of Edgar Allan Poe selected works. I adore Edgar Allan Poe so much. I actually I got to go to the Edgar Allan Poe Museum down in Richmond. I, I just I, his life is fascinating and I love it. So this has his complete short stories, um, in the novella, and then the raven and some other poems. So I got scuffed up a little bit up here but I love the collector's editions of stuff like that. All right, so next I have a copy of Dante's Inferno. This is the copy we used in my tragedy class. This thing is like huge. I've got notes in it. I made marks in it. Uh, again, if I like something, odds are I will have more than one copy of it in my collection. Next I have two books on essentially atheism. Back in college, I was president and co-founder of our secular society in Washington, D.C. I actually had the pleasure of meeting a lot of big people um, in the atheist movement, these two people included. P.Z. Myers, who wrote The Happy Atheist, he's such an amazing person. Uh, a pleasure to work with, everything. Uh, great book, really recommend it if you're interested. Um, this goes without saying, but Richard Dawkins is an ass. <laughs> But this is where I struggle because honestly, this is one of the best books I've read. <laughs> but Richard Dawkins is a dick, right? So uh, he's also like really racist. So if you can ignore everything and just take this book for what it is and what it presents, it's great. But Richard Dawkins is a dick. That being said, I got the dick to sign my book. Because <laughs> I had to do a whole... And look at his signature. Like, that's the signature of a dick. Like... I had to do an event with him at my school and ugh, well, that could be a whole story time in and of itself, but yeah, it's rough. Next I have the book Adele and this one was pretty interesting. I picked it up on recommendation through like some book swaps and also because she wrote The Perfect Nanny. That was such a good book. Uh, my coworker let me borrow that book and let me read it and it was, oh, it was good. Oh, it was very good. So I got this one. I didn't like it as much as The Perfect Nanny, but it was still an interesting book. Next, I have another collection of Lang Leaves poetry. This is Memories. Oh, I love this. I love the way that this is bound. I love everything about it. Should probably do better to organize, like, what books are where, because they're a bit mixed up right now. Next, I have Elizabeth Gilbert, The Signature of All Things. This is another book that just came out of left field. This is such a great novel. It's pretty big and a bit thick. I wasn't, okay, I gotta say, I wasn't expecting much coming from the author of Eat, Pray, Love, but this book, oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, so that was actually really good. Highly recommend that one. Next, I have the book Middlesex. This is the uh, the same author that wrote um, The Virgin Suicides. I got this book on the recommendation of my old manager from my bookstore job because I love asking people what book would they recommend and they can tell a lot about someone by what they would recommend you to read. And he recommended this book to me. I only got to reading it recently and it blew my mind. It is so good. Oh my god. A sweeping family history. It's intense. Oh god, just read that book. Please, <laughs> please read that book. Next we have Neil deGrasse Tyson, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. And then we have a book that absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> this is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagi, Yanagi Hara. And oh my god, this book I actually like sobbed when I read this book. Uh, but it, it, it's good. It's like that scene in Harry Potter. So, uh, you're gonna suffer? Mm -hmm but you're gonna be happy about it. Like this book right here. It deals with some very, 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 very heavy themes. 
including but not limited to child abuse, um, rape, uh, suicide, uh, self-harm. So there's a lot going on in this book. But it won a bunch of awards and it... Oh God, it's good. It's good. So if you can if you can deal with that subject matter, I would highly recommend getting that book because it's it's incredible. Next, I actually have a memoir slash recipe book, which is called Japanese Women Don't Get Old or Fat. I got this in college when I was looking to actually like cook different things. And you can see from all the bookmarks. Wait, let's go, let's go up. I've got a bunch of bookmarks in here <laughs> because those are all the recipe pages. So like what it's it's structured as in the author will talk a little bit about her life, her childhood, and then go into a recipe. And then talk a little bit more about her life, recipe. So it's it's interesting. I would really recommend it. This was based on the original book, which was about French women. And it was like a French uh, like cookbook kind of thing. Um, so they've got the French one, they've got this Japanese one. I really recommend it, especially if you're interested in uh, like international cooking or cuisine or memoirs. Next I have Haiku Moment, which is just a collection of like American haiku. Eh, I got this because I worked at the bookstore and I saw it and thought it would be better than it, it was. <laughs> uh, I've got the Murakami Haruki book. This is Norwegian Wood. Uh, scoot, 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 scoot. Next we have The Folded Clock. I actually have not read this book yet, but I picked it up and was recommended this book because I do love memoir. So this is a diary slash memoir. Next I have The Setting Sun, and then we go into Shakespeare. This is the Signet Classic Shakespeare that I read when I was in school, and this is my copy of Macbeth. I really want to get some more copies of Macbeth because it's... I'm a little sad that I only have like this one. <laughs> But it's had the first time I read Macbeth was in here, and it's sentimental as all hell. And you can see over here I have another copy of the Red and the Black. We went over that earlier, the nice collector's edition that I have. Um, this book right here. Let's talk about this one for a little bit. So this book, uh, I was actually given this book as a child because my mother passed away. And the main character in this book lives with her grandparents because her mother did pass away. I honestly forgot what happened to her father. I think he's alive, but he didn't deal with it well. So the whole story of this book is that the mother died in like a bus accident. And so they're going to travel across country to go see her grave because she's never seen her mother's grave before because she passed away so far away from home. So uh, it is heavy, um, but it is written in a way that makes this believable and accessible for even a younger audience. So this was one of the best things I was recommended to read at that time. Um, and I still have it. So if I mean, if I'd say it's even worth it to read it when you're older. So if you're interested, if any of this applies to you, or if you know a child that's going through anything like that, I'd recommend that book. So we did the red and the black. We've got Ibsen, some plays, also from my tragedy class. My copy of The Count of Monte Cristo, which is beat up. I read that in high school. <laughs> Uh, I've got Ernest Hemingway, The Sun Also Rises. That's my famous uh, Hemingway title. I don't really like the rest of his works, to be quite honest. Um, I've got a book of plays by Sophocles, specifically the three Theban plays. Oh, this book is gonna mess you up. Okay. This was a book that I was recommended to read in high school by a professor. This is called The Collector by John Fowles. Where do I begin? So, let me actually, let me see if I can read the back of this. Hailed as the first modern psychological thriller, The Collector is the internationally best-selling novel that catapulted John Fowles into the front rank of contemporary novelists. This tale of obsessive love, the story of a lonely clerk who collects butterflies, and of the beautiful young art student who was his ultimate quarry, remains unparalleled in its power to startle and mesmerize. Yeah. So as someone who loves psychological thrillers, yes. Yes, yes, yes incredible so <laughs> i would pick this up if you are interested uh i just whew. next i have a book about paris the city of light under german occupation i have not fully read this one uh so it's it's waiting <laughs> uh here we have candide by voltaire i read this in my comedy class the one i took right after my tragedy class uh, a novel that was actually pretty decent was mr penumbra's 24-hour bookstore what's cool about this cover is that all these yellow slashes they glow in the dark <laughs> which is kind of cool but it is a bit of a um, like Illuminati themed high fantasy novel so if you're interested that's a pretty decent novel 
Uh, next, I have Amanda Knox's memoir, Waiting to be Heard. And then we have the beat up version of that wasted memoir I mentioned before, like that one's actually like falling apart. Uh, next, I have Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden, Arthur, Arthur Golden. Uh, I have another Japanese lit book, Bokchan by Natsume Soseki. Um, I have The Chick and the Dead, which just look at that spine. It's got a scalpel and it's got a mascara wand, just like, ugh. Just slay me. <laughs> That's me. I loved it. That, that actually convinced me to pick up this book. I have not actually read the full book yet, but it just deals with a woman, and I'm assuming she works in the funeral um, business, but it's all about the chick and the dead. It's, yeah, fascinating. And last but not least, I have the novelization of The Shape of Water because I loved that movie. It hit... It hit something deep inside of me. I don't know. I really love that movie and connected with it and the soundtrack and everything. So I picked up the novelization because I wanted to have it around. So there we have it. That is my... So that's not my full book collection, but it is both of the bookshelves that you see in the back of almost every single one of my videos. If we were to go through every single book that I owned in my entire like room slash house slash life, we would be here for hours. But I really just wanted to show you the bookshelves back here so you kind of had an idea. This is a good summary of my collection, so I thought it would be really fun to go through all of these. Thank you guys so much for voting for this video idea. Let me know down below if you want to see any more book-themed content. And if you've read any of these books, if you have any book recommendations, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.